friends in our previous sessions we have discussed about rock forming minerals no doubt they are so important they determine the properties of the rock not only to identify and classify the rocks by virtue of their presence or absence determine the properties of the rocks and rocks we are going to use in our various construction activities they are important but there are several minerals by virtue of their physical properties we have mentioned those with hardness less than this their concentration their physical properties etc makes them to suitable for application in various industries now we shall discuss some of the industrially important minerals let us not carry the impression that only the minerals i discuss are important in industries there are n number of minerals but these are most commonly used widely available and we use these in industries since long time with the advent of technology some new minerals find application a new application a new industry etc but so far what is being widely used and we come across in a day to day life we discuss here so now we move on to industrially important minerals we call them industrial group of minerals means these frequently widely used in several industries as just now i have said only these are not the industrially important raw materials there are n number but we will study some of the minerals talc gypsum calcite kainite corundum asbestos this just i have given the picture say example kainite example calcite say the corundum like these are all common minerals we use them in industry we have mentioned gypsum we are all aware of the properties of the gypsum it binds quickly it is added to cement as a raw material because it increases the setting rate of the cement earlier we used to wait for 20 days 21 days 28 days for curing but now we cannot wait so long we want the cement should able to bind with the cement the rock aggregate and form a strong concrete concrete structure can we wait for 28 days we keep on supplying water to maintain water because chemical changes take place in presence of water that cement will able to bind in presence of water and 28 days we have to wait supply water do we have enough time in project like a road therefore we now coming up with certain additional chemicals we can increase the rate of binding capacity gypsum is one such material it is so simple material naturally available even at home we can make simple experiment crush the gypsum mineral mix with water we have seen we have been to doctor sometimes we have a fracture we go to doctor doctor puts some band what is that he crushes he has the powder of gypsum mix with water make a good paste workable paste like and apply some half an hour enough it become hard it means it has ability to bind quickly gypsum is an important raw material not only 
only in medical industry, in our construction industry and finds wide application in many other industries, cement industry is one which we know very well since long. Gypsum has chemical composition calcium sulphate combined with water. In absence of water we call anhydride and if exposed come in contact they absorb water, they are hydrated sulphates. Barium is also another sulphate, but we use them in some other other industry because by virtue of calcium it is important in our cement industry etc. It is available in a massive form, massive form means it do not have any regular shape, rarely it may have a tabular like habit, but more commonly in irregular shape, they do not have definite shape we call it massive. It is generally white in color, streak is also white. So, luster <coughs> silky often, but more often sub pearly also. So, sub pearly to silky luster. Cleavage is one set in one direction, they have a weak plane easy to break along that plane. Fracture is uneven, in other direction we tend to break, we get such uneven surface. Hardness of this mineral in the hardness part as per the Mohs scale, the hardness is 2. Next 2 tall and this mineral is a scratchable, easy to crush powder it. powdering, mix with water, make suitable mix and then apply. Specific gravity is 2.3 2.3. Another wonderful property, I have to apply this as a plaster, if that material is heavy, if doctor advises me for 3 weeks, I have to remain with that plaster, unnecessary heavy, I have to it is uncomfortable, wonderful property is a slow specific gravity. Therefore, it makes friendly that is in the cement industry it is widely used. Yes, friends, if tomorrow we across some of this material, we should able to identify and use. Tomorrow in your field, you come across a material of this kind. We do not know whether it is a gypsum or something else. It could be something else. If this has this kind of pro property, light, easy to crush, mix with water, if it can bind quickly, wonderful, that also can be. But there are some materials when you apply to come in contact friendly with the skin, injurious and danger. The wonderful property of gypsum is it is skin friendly. Such material we may come across. In Ayurveda we have heard mud bath, they also apply. Most of them have similar property, but one property is not there. So, what is that property? Try. Now, we have just mentioned the gypsum, there are other materials like this. Some of this property we may not find what in other. See, that is the binding capacity. Mud bath they do and do they bind? They develop cracks after some years, water evaporated, law, they crack, whereas gypsum do not. That is the wonderful property. 
No. Another good mineral is a calcite. Calcite, it is crystalline. In hand specimen, it look like massive, often crystalline. But under microscope, if you see, they are crystalline. Specific habit, they have atomic arrangement packing. They have. They are available either pink, white, even light yellow color, etc. The colorless to that color. Streak is white calcite, but if calcite itself is a colorless, calcite is colorless, and when you rub on the plate, porcelain plate is also white. Calcite gives white, very feeble. People feel it is colorless, but it is not strictly colorless. It is white. Cleavage is present. We have said calcite has cleavage in three dimensions at an angle. As a result, they give rhombic shape of the broken surface. If you keep crushing, 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 that rhombic shape is retained. What I want to say is, I have big this calcite, break it, break it, break it, break it, break it. Even the small particle I get has the similar shape as that of the big material, mineral, because by virtue of their cleavage in three direction, they break easily and retain that. Their hardness is a three calcite. In Mohus scale of hardness, a little harder than the gypsum. Their specific gravity is medium. What do I mean medium? 2.6 for you for the quartz. Yesterday we have said 2.6 is a medium specific gravity and 2.54 it is, we can say this also medium. Anything below less than that, gypsum we have just now seen 2.3, it is a low we call. Even there are some in the even lower. Thus, it is a specific gravity 2.5, we call it medium. It is a chemical composition calcium carbonate. A rock totally made of rock. This kind of mineral attracts to raw material for cement industry. And these are widely available in all these places. The line form, if present, we call it marble. Marble is a rock made up of such a calcite mineral. And in all these places, we have the marble. We have seen Taj Mahal, uh, Hyderabad, Birla Temple, Delhi. They have used beautiful marbles. We have seen even everywhere it is used, flooring, decorative, everywhere. So, use in the manufacture of cement, bleaching powder, Textile industry, facing, decorative, even carving. Everywhere it is used. What is the special property? How do I identify in the site if I come across a rock of this? If I have a doubt, how do I identify? Dilute hydrochloric acid, two, three drops you drop on the specimen, they evolve carbon dioxide, give out, bubbles come out. That is indication that this is a carbonate rock, carbon dioxide is released. Now, another important mineral belonging to this carbonate group and we widely come across are dolomite. They are also crystalline. Grey to dark grey in color, 
the streak is colorless very rarely but it is white most of it, it is a white only dirty white or white not perfectly cotton white like therefore often we say it is not white it can be white dirty white it has medium that is a diaphority light do not pass through it can pass through calcite crystal very easily but it is not passing through therefore it is diaphority we call it medium strictly diaphority this is pure form we use in microscope light has to pass through when i have a big specimen big chunk of specimen i feel light do not pass through it so my identification criteria in the site in the laboratory differs so these are the technique i may use in the site so luster vitreous somewhat somewhat sub pearly that range yes cleavage is present but in hand specimen difficult to find under microscope very easily you can say yes it is it belongs to the same group of mineral <coughs> hardness it is little harder than that specific gravity is medium it is also carbonate but along with calcium there is a magnesium also caso3 mgco3 i write ca mg CO3 twice in bracket. Mineral dolom. It is available almost every part of the country. Almost I say, almost all over India. It is widely distributed. When I put hydrochloric acid, immediately I do not get bubbles. It is also carbonate. There is a carbonate in it. Why do not? magnesium is less reactive compared to calcium therefore when i put effervescence calcium tends to release carbon dioxide magnesium is less reactive this is one reason the second reason is magnesium has a special affinity towards towards climate therefore that is if i have a specimen magnesium can come and form a small thin coating on the surface and that inhibits easy penetration of acid into therefore they do not release carbon dioxide and give effervescence immediately but if i break the specimen and now internal part is exposed a freshly broken surface if i put acid then they give effervescence but again degree of effervescence is, is less as compared to the calcite mineral therefore often people say because in the site if magnesium is coated i put a drop of acid i may not get effervescence i have to break put the acid in the internal part interior inside because often we are not supposed to damage the specimen if it is something valuable gold diamond something if i break it therefore without damaging non destructive test when we apply i say they do not give bubbles because i am not putting acid on freshly broken surface yes sir, this is a continuation of the process so sorry i have some yes sir
Yes, magnesite is another important mineral, it is a continuation from previous slide, say I have a mineral perfectly cotton white, cotton white mineral. It is a massive form, white in color, just now I said cotton white, it gives white streak, again definitely light passing through this, we can say opaque. Because when a light passes through edge of this specimen, some light may pass. It depends on thickness and it is not shining, dull shining. Cleavage is not there in this mineral. Again, hardness is 3 to 3.5, broken with uneven surface, specific gravity, medium magnesium carbonate. How about its response to acid then? Here also we have carbonate, carbon dioxide has to escape. When I put acid on them, I do not get bubbles because magnesium is less reactive, it do not easily permit acid to attack on them and release carbon dioxide. Therefore, what I have to do? I break the specimen if I have to identify properly. Then I warm it. Once I warm it, then put the acid, it can give. What is that? <coughs> we know Many of the chemical reactions take place in presence of heat, they become more active. So, warm specimen can give. It occurs in ultra basic igneous rocks if altered. We have ultra basic rock like a dunite, olivine, etc. What is ultra basic? question comes in. We can classify the rocks and in our next section if we try acidic, moderately acidic, moderately basic, basic, ultra basic depends on their composition. We follow SiO2 as the criteria to classify these rocks. More details we study there. A rock which has a SiO2 composition less than 45 percent, we call them ultra basic. Ultra basic rocks have more magnesium and iron content. If such rocks are subjected to a kind of alteration we call hydrothermal alteration. What is hydrothermal? Hydro water, thermal temperature, a high temperature solution, if reacts on such rocks, they, those minerals are broken down and form or such rocks alter and give rise to this kind of minerals that is magnesite. This is another important industrial mineral. You may ask what is that? So, magnesite source of magnesium in the chemistry laboratory we have used magnesium so much in many industries it is there. Friends, I take you back to this magnesium is there, calcium carbonate, calcium magnesium carbonate. It is not the carbonate, it is the calcium that qualifies them to be used in a cement industry. And here there is a magnesium less reactive, if I use them in a industry, cement industry, less reactive, it do not burn quickly, should I use it? Therefore, we have some limit 
if a rock contains say magnesium more than 7 percent or some percent it is not that attractive that cement is not good it is a binding capacity dependent on calcium not magnesium. So, obviously for a cement industry this is more attractive this is a less attractive and obviously the magnesite is least attractive for such industry, but it is a source of magnesium as good as magnesium ore. Therefore, I prefer to use them in sub industries as a source like ore mineral than as a raw material for some other industry. Yes, friends, we have discussed about important industrial minerals. Although I have said important minerals like this, 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 corundum rarely we use in our industry in the sense not as a raw material. Corundum we do use for polishing, but not that good quality. Corundum hardness 9, we can use a cutting, carving, corborundum, synthetic available, we sprinkle them for our cutting machines, drilling machines, etcetera, there we use. But corundum, we use them in a jewelry industry, not as a raw material for industry it is other form, impure form we use, asbestos we use in industry, asbestos sheet, but civil engineers directly connected with the cement. Therefore, I have taken them as an example calcite and gypsum. I have not focused much on corundum or asbestos, even the top. Talk also we use as a lubricating material in our drilling machine, drilling operation we require. Talcum powder is another important industry and mineral, but this is a cosmetic industry, not an industry directly connected to a civil engineer. Although we add on value to such minerals, in a day to day engineering activities, these are important raw materials. I have discussed with those. Friends, let us not carry the impression that a number of minerals available do not have industrial application. They do have example, apatite finds application of fertilizer industry. Are we directly concerned with the fertilizer industry? Civil engineers. Therefore, we have focused only these few minerals in this discussion. No. Yes. Let us move on to rocks. In our previous session, we have said minerals are found in rocks. When their concentration is beyond a critical limit, it can be used as a ore. So, concentration is one important. If they are low in concentration, several minerals are there in a rock, it may not be a raw material for an industry, but certainly it is an important material in our construction activities. So, now from raw material industry to construction industry we move. So, we will now focus on our discussion to rocks. What do we mean by rocks? It is an aggregate of a mineral. 
a rock is made up of a several minerals. Example, this is a rock. You find in that there are white, there are dark, like this there are some small shining, not strictly white or dark, they are colorless. It means this is a rock in which I have some shining part, white, some gray, dark color, there are several color patches I find from a distance. If I take it in hand, if I can use it a magnifying lens, I am able to find a different constituents in the and that is a rock. Rock is nothing but made up of several minerals. We call it a aggregate of minerals. Aggregate means their property dependent on the several minerals, their abundance in that material. So, rock in general is an aggregate of mineral. It is also found in the upper layer of the earth crust where we also find minerals. This is also solid like a mineral, but minerals are homogeneous, rocks are not homogeneous. In the different parts of the material, I find if this is the rock specimen here, 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 here. In different parts of the same specimen, I find a different material. Yesterday I have shown you some throughout the same, whether here, 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 the same, same color, same, it is homogeneous. That was mineral. This is rock. It is aggregate of minerals. Now, there are different type of rocks in our previous primary high school level. Also, we have studied some way or the other, some primary introduction about the rocks. What do you mean by rocks? We know it is an aggregate of minerals. Rocks are classified into igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. What is igneous? The word agni, a Greek word, igneous, agni, Sanskrit word. There was a lot of, they were contemporary languages some 3000 years back. They were contemporary languages and therefore there was a lot of similarity in the application of this language words. It is derived from that word igneous. What do you mean by igneous? What do you mean by agni? Agni, fire. A fire like a condition. A rock derived from fire like a condition. What is that? If I have anything material, metal or something and I put into fire at a high temperature, it can melt. If I allow it to cool, that gets solidified and from that melt, something is formed, that kind of rock is called igneous rock that is formed from a liquid which had fire like situation, very high temperature. From high temperature liquid, if something is solidified, that we call igneous rock. When I say igneous, if this is the ground and at great depth, as I know, as I go deeper and deeper, temperature increases. As I go deeper and deeper, pressure also increases. At a certain special condition, rock can melt. It was a rock earlier. It can melt. That melt is called a magma. This magma due to earth pressure can be forced to intermediate depth. It is intrusive and it may 
even reach the surface it is called extrusive igneous rocks broadly classified into intrusive and extrusive broadly we have sedimentary rocks what is sediment anything that is available exposed to surface condition atmosphere condition we have seen all around the soil broken rock fragments anything that is exposed to air and atmospheric condition because of a continuous rain heat of the sun atmospheric gases all attack on them they disintegrate them they break them if the broken material get a transported and deposited somewhere and forms again hard material that become a sedimentary rock it is not necessary that anything that is broken is transported as it is depends on the nature of the material some materials are not dissolved at all they are called clastic those materials which can be dissolved and form a solution and carried along with the water simple example bring some amount of soil put it in a jar containing water stir it well what happens that loose soil may contain particles larger smaller smaller like various particles they settle in the bottom depends on their size and density but still water is not clear it's become muddy color changed because there are some minute particles remain in suspension and that poor water become a color filter that water then it should be free from those suspended materials do that water now after filter is colorless before using that water test the composition of the water simplest ph condition or iron content or something hardness or something whatever after this filtration you have put them in a jar remove the settling material then suspended material you have filtered after that you get a water that water composition you check its original composition in terms of iron or ph or some other property hardness etc have changed why because from that soil something has been dissolved in that water changed the composition it means we have so many constituents in the soil some of them are soluble and those soluble materials are moving along with the water they may get depth brought to a lake brought to a pond or a sea there gradually some kind of change physico chemical what do you mean by physico chemical ph or chemical composition physical condition the like temperature pressure etc they determine they change if that water now brought to a new condition they may get deposited such rocks we call chemically formed chemically deposited chemically precipitated there are some materials there may be some kind of a bacteria that bacteria needs some materials that were present in the water they absorb them what is that in the water lake system 
C system, if there are bacteria, this bacteria may require some materials for their life activities. Obviously, they extract these materials from the dissolved water for their life activities. What happened? Suppose I have a water body, it was rich in iron, there was a bacteria that requires iron, they absorb and extract this iron. So, now the water column composition is changed and bacteria have used they have played a role to secrete and deposit them and thus a kind of material get deposited by virtue of bacterial activity. We call them as organic, organic materials or organic activities involved in their precipitation. We call organically formed sedimentary rocks. We will take up this a little more detail. Just now we are trying to classify, trying to enter into. Metamorphic, what do you mean by meta? Meta means change, morph means morphology, their habit. Metamorphic rocks are those rocks which have changed their morphology. Why do they change? I have a material here like this. If I apply pressure, it becomes like this. Morphology is changed. So simple. That means, what is that? The load or the pressure. As a result of pressure, they may change. If this is a hard material, if I apply pressure, if I apply pressure, it may not become so easily elongated. So, shape may not change so easily. As the pressure increases, the temperature also increases. Temperature tends to make the material soften. If there is a pressure, materials are softened, they tend to escape to the region where there is a less pressure. Obviously, original materials also now become like this. In this case, a temperature also accompanied. In this case, only pressure accompanied. Often, I have this, the pressure developed and the relative hardness of the rock, it is relative. This rock may be so hard, they are broken into small pieces, fractured, broken and then you check the individual particle, this one, this one, this one like this, this one like this, the individual particle shape like this, like this. Now you see, now, this kind of a change, it was a solid rock in response to pressure, in response to pressure, accompanied by little temperature, in response to a kind of pressure. If there are some chemically active fluids, if present, they may also help. Net result is, any rock that was already existing, they can undergo this kind of change and form a metamorphic rock. How do I know? It is a metamorphic rock. What was the previous and what is present? There is a definite change, not everything, everywhere, anything can happen. That is a guideline for me. Anyway. We have a rock called metamorphic rocks. Again, broadly based on the form, external form, just to have said, this is not 
foliated, not elongated, not arranged, irregular, these are all a definite shape they got. If rocket is like this, like this, several windows, like this, like this, now you find all are layered, arranged, foliated, like this. So, metamorphic rocks we classify into foliated and non-foliated broadly. Thus, we have broadly three types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. Friends, now you are eager to know more about this. Just now I have mentioned sedimentary rocks, metamorphic rocks. We know earth when it formed, how it was? There was a sun, hot ball of gas a star passed very close to that sun, pulled a mass of gas from the sun and those mass of gas in space, they got separated from the sun. When it was with the sun, their temperature was so high, now they are here. Sun was here, a mass of gas brought here, that star passed out, ran away. Now, this mass of gas, now away from the sun, temperature condition was different, therefore, they started gradually losing their temperature. From gases to liquid stage, they came down. From the liquid stage, if temperature falls further down, they have to solidify. That hot liquid first formed we have called the magma. That magma solidified on cooling either at a great depth or on the surface or intermediate surface, they solidified. Obviously, if I have a magma at depth, if this is the ground surface, if they are brought to here, obviously the pressure here, pressure here, are different. The temperature here, the temperature here are different because ultimately pressure is due to the load of the overlying material and temperature due to geothermal gradient or increase in temperature with depth. People have calculated the rate of rise in temperature with depth. On an average, say for every 100 meter depth, there is 1 degree rise in temperature. Imagine crust is the, if we have the earth crust, this is say 40 kilometer thick, this is the crust. For every 100 meter, 1 degree, for 40 kilometer, how much? 100 meter, 1 degree. If we calculate, we expect very high temperature here and then obviously, we expect a high temperature therefore, rock to melt. High pressure also no doubt. This rock, if they melt, brought to intermediate depth from here to here. Obviously, there is a lesser temperature, less pressure, they start solidifying. And if they are brought to the surface more rapidly, they solidify. That we call as igneous rock. What happens if igneous rocks, they themselves at the time of extrusion, they come to the surface. Those which are rocks which have solidified at depth, do not have any chance to come to the surface? They do not come. They remain in the same place. What happens if I remove the soil layer, if I remove the soil layer, if I remove the soil layer, this rock now is on the ground. How this can be removed? If by weathering and erosion, this material is removed, 
this layer is removed. Now this layer remains. After so many years, this layer also get removed. After so many years, this layer also get removed. Now this rock is exposed. It means even the rocks which have formed a depth some thousand millions years back, they can be brought to the surface by two methods. One is the surface material get eroded, but if a rock which is formed at a 40 kilometer depth, 20 kilometer depth, if that has to be brought to the surface, difficult 20 kilometer thick is to be eroded, how much time it requires? There are some process we call uplift. Uplift means if this entire area itself is lifted up, then it becomes easy for that rock to get ear exposed. Top soil can be eroded rapidly, that is uplift. How uplift happens? Example, example, I have a rock. I have a rock. If this is the ground, this may be the soil cover, this is the rock layer which I am referring. If I compress it, what may happen? If this is the ground, this layer, if I compress it, become like this. And then the soil cover like this. This is the ground soil cover and then the ground is like this. This is uplifted. Now, when it is uplifted, obviously, this is at a higher level, get eroded faster and this rock can be exposed. That is, uh, uplift is one process through which rocks can, can be exposed more faster than it was otherwise and as a result uplift we have mountain like elevated regions are developed and erosion is more common in the uplifted thus in mountainous area erosion exposes the rocks below it therefore even uplift by they are exposed to the surface. We call it outcrop. What do you mean by outcrop? Suppose this is the ground, if there is a rock, it is not exposed to the atmosphere. It is concealed from atmospheric condition. That is, atmospheric gases cannot attack on them. Atmospheric heat cannot affect them water cannot reach them, they are protected. Therefore, they do not undergo any type of alteration, but if they by process uplifted by erosion, if they are exposed, if topsoil is removed, there are different ways, we will discuss it subsequently, but how what is outcrop? Just I want to mention, if this outcrop exposes part of the rock to the atmosphere, what may happen? Friends, we will continue.